Hello, welcome to lecture 15 of ELEC NH2 CI5. We'll be discussing in this lecture Norton theorem, which is the dual of uh, Thevenin theorem. We'll show that any linear circuit can be replaced by a current source in better with a resistor. And uh, we use this theorem very often in analyzing uh, amplifiers, um, uh, circuits with transistors and so on. It's very useful, it's used very often, but I would say that the Thevenin one is the one that's more widely used. Uh, Norton is similar to Thevenin, so most people, I would say, in, in applications, they, uh, they go directly for Thevenin. But it's very important to know Norton theorem because it will open the door for us to see the um, source transformation that we can use to simplify circuits. Okay, so the basic concept in, uh, in Norton uh, theorem is that if you have a linear circuit, and this linear circuit can have many components, uh, all type of sources and so on. Then between any two terminals, looking into this circuit from the side of the load, we can replace the whole circuit with a current source in parallel with a resistance uh, Rn. So we call this I Norton, the Norton current source, and we call this resistance the Norton resistance. Okay, so if you want to calculate the current flowing in the load resistor, it's very simple. It's a current division. It's I n multiply R n over R n plus R L. If you want to calculate the voltage across the load resistor, then the total load seen by the Norton source is the barrel combination of these two. And in that case, the voltage drop across uh, across here so I can simply draw this way, the voltage drop between this point and this point will be equal to I n multiplying um, the barrel combination of these two. So it's I n multiplying R n barrel with R L. Okay, so this is really the basic concept. Replace a, a linear circuit, regardless of how complicated it is, by just one current source and one resistor. This current source here represents the effect of all your independent sources okay of all the independent voltage sources that you have of all the independent current sources so if you remove all the sources all the independent sources that you have here this one here will be reduced to zero and reducing it to zero means that you have here open circuit between these two terminals okay you reduce the current to zero in this branch which means that you have open circuit Now, similar to the Thevenin case, we have to find a way of determining I Norton and R Norton. Um, the equivalent circuit, this is how the equivalent circuit looks like. You have a, a Norton a current and a Norton resistor. If we short the output terminal, so if we create a short circuit, so in the lab, we can do that. We connect the output terminal to a piece of wire, and then we try to find the current flowing through this piece of wire through an ammeter. Okay? In, in analytically, with a, with a pen and paper, we create a circuit by shorting the output, okay? And then the current flowing in this short circuit must be equal to the Norton current. Why? Because you can see this short circuit bypasses the Norton resistance. So the, the Norton current will flow directly in the outer loop and will ignore completely Rn. So to find the Norton current is extremely simple. Create a short circuit at the board. And then the current flowing in this short circuit, I short circuit, is equal to I Norton. Now, how do we find the Norton resistance? Well, you have these two ports here, this, two, this one port here, it's two terminals. So create an open circuit. If you create an open circuit here in, the, in, the, in, 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 your, in your circuit, the original linear circuit, remember, this, this part here represents uh, an equivalent circuit of a much bigger circuit, the linear circuit we are considering. So I, if, I cons if I create an open circuit between these two terminals, then I Norton will flow only through R Norton, okay? And in that case, the voltage drop that I'm going to be measuring here, plus and minus, will be equal to I Norton multiplying R Norton, okay? So V open circuit would be I Norton, R Norton, was that R Norton is V open circuit divided by R Norton, by I Norton. Uh, so R Norton, the Norton resistance, you find it by dividing the open circuit voltage by the value of the Norton current, which you already determined from this first step here, from the short circuit keys. 
Notice that this exp expression is the same one we use for calculating R7. R7 was also calculated as V open circuit divided by I short circuit, and the I short circuit is I Norton. And I will show you in a second that indeed the, the Norton equivalent circuit and the 7 equivalent circuit they are related, they are not independent from one another. If you know one, you actually do know the other. Okay, uh, so this nice duality between voltage source and current sources can be helpful in many in analyzing circuits and so on. Okay, we can calculate the Norton current, I Norton, and the Norton resistance, R Norton, through some other approach. The first part in this approach is still to calculate a short circuit in the ABO port. And in that case, I Norton will flow in the outer loop, will ignore R Norton, then I Norton is equal to I short circuit. So whatever current you're going to measure here or calculate here is I Norton. The second one takes, try to, 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 to build on the fact that this I Norton represents all the independent voltage and current sources you have in your circuit. So if I go to my original linear circuit and remove all the independent voltage sources, then this one here becomes open circuit. So this is what we have here. Then looking looking into this open, open circuit terminal, open circuit terminals here, the resistance you're going to be seeing is simply R Norton. Okay? This is the same resistance we can see. And remember, this was the same as R7. This is exactly what this was R7. So what we can conclude from this discussion is that R7 is the same as R Norton. They are equal, okay? And because the open circuit, uh, the open circuit voltage was equal to uh, I Norton, R Norton, uh, we can, and the open circuit voltage is V7, we can simply say that I Norton is V7 over R7. Or we can also drive another expression, which is that V7, you can get V7, okay? V7 is simply equal to I Norton multiplying R Norton, okay? So this is I Norton multiplying R Norton here, okay? So if I know the Norton current and resistance, then I know I know the uh, the the seven in voltage, and if I know the seven in uh, voltage and resistance, then I know the Norton resistance, and I can get the Norton current. So one of them will lead to the other. It's, so it's there is no really uh, difficulty in in doing that. Okay, so let's move to discuss um, examples on how to use Norton uh, and how to obtain the equivalent equivalent Norton circuit of a linear. Uh, electric uh, pro uh, electric circuit here. Okay, we have this problem. Um, very simple problem. One source, only one current source. Would like to find the current flowing in this 10 ohm resistor using Norton theorem. Okay, so what we are going to be doing here, we are going to create a port. So we, we come at this point here and then we create a port. Okay. And then we would like to replace all the circuit to the left by just one Norton current and one Norton resistance. In better was one Norton resistance. And uh, once we have found that, you'll see that this, that this equivalent circuit will be connected to the 10 ohm to find the current flowing in the 10 ohm, okay? So remember here, this 10 ohm is a load. When we calculate the, when we calculate the Norton uh, current and Norton resistance, we don't take it into account. Because we are only calculating it, looking into these two terminals, looking in this terminal towards the circuit itself, okay? This simply represents a load. We are going to be using it later. So the first thing to do is to create a short circuit here in the ABO port, okay? So this is a load. Okay, get rid of this load. We create a short circuit here, and then we try to calculate I short circuit. So I redrew the circuit here again, and these are the steps what you have to do. You have to get rid of this 10 ohm, replace it by a short circuit, and then you analyze the circuit. Of course, if you are doing analytical solution, you find the current flowing here through um, loop analysis, nodal analysis, superposition, whatever technique you like to use, okay? And then we will try to eliminate all the independent sources to find the input resistance from this side. So what we're going to be doing, we're going to create an open circuit between here and here. And then remove this source. This is the only independent source we have in our circuit. And we agreed in order to remove the Norton current, 
we have to remove all the independent sources. So the, this source here becomes open circuit, and then we try to find the input resistance looking into the circuit. Okay, this is our first step. We create the new circuit by shorting the output port. Okay, and then our target is to find the current flowing in this short circuit. This I short circuit will be our I Norton. This is the Norton current. Remember the equivalent circuit of this one represent, uh, represents the Norton uh, resist, resist resistor source. So this is the equivalent circuit here. We have a Norton source. This is what we call here I Norton. Okay, and this one is in parallel with R Norton. Okay, so if I create a short circuit here, if I create a short circuit as I'm showing here, then what I'm doing, I am bypassing R, R Norton, and all the current will flow, the, the current that will flow in the short circuit is I Norton. And, and this is what I did here in the actual circuit, not in the equivalent circuit. I created a short circuit here. So the current flowing here in this one will be actually I Norton of the equivalent circuit. Okay? So if you do that, you'll see that this 9 ohm is, has been eliminated. You see that this 24 ampere will be divided between 6 ohm, and it will go this way, and 3 ohm, and it will go this way. There is no current flowing in the 9 ohm resistor. It's already short-circuited. So we can use the current divider expression that the I short circuit is equal to the 24 ampere multiplying 3 ohm over 3 ohm plus 6 ohm. Okay, this is a current division expression. It's a current division between 6 ohm and 3 ohm, and I'm looking for the current flowing in the 6 ohm. This is I short circuit here, okay? So it's 24 ampere multiplying 3 over 3 plus 6. So this will be one third. One third of 24 is 8 amperes. So we know now that the I short circuit, which is equal to I Norton, is equal to 8 amperes. So we found the first part. We found the first, the, first the, the Norton current. Now we have to move to find the Norton resistance. What is the Norton resistance? Okay, Norton resistance, we're going to find it by looking into this circuit after we eliminate all the independent sources. Don't touch any dependent sources. Don't touch any current controlled current source, current controlled voltage source, because I explained before these sources do not represent really uh, actual sources. They represent transistors. They represent ob amps. They represent um, amplifiers. They are part of your circuit. They are not really actual sources that you, you connect your circuit to. So don't touch any dependent sources. Only eliminate the independent sources. Every voltage source becomes a short circuit. Every current source becomes an open circuit. So now we go back here. We are going to create an open circuit between this point and this point, and then we are going to eliminate all the independent sources, so this one here becomes an open circuit. Okay, so this is how the circuit looks like now. You can see I created an open circuit. This is the second step in calculating the Norton, finding R Norton. So I created an open circuit, and then in my original circuit, I removed all the independent sources. This is exactly equivalent to having this here, this is R Norton, okay, and this one here becomes open circuit. There is no I Norton anymore. Why? Because when you remove, when you remove the uh, the all the sources in your original circuit, this is the only source we have here. Then you are actually making the equivalent Norton current equal to zero. So looking into this circuit, you are going to see R Norton, and this is what we have here. Looking into this open circuit from the left, you see that this will give you 9 in parallel with 9. It's going to give you 4.5 ohm. So looking into the circuit, the, the circuit that we have, after we eliminated all the independent sources, we get that R input. Usually you call it R input, the input resistance. Um, uh, and this in this case is the Norton resistance. So it's going to be 4.5 ohm. So what we did now, we managed to find the equivalent resistance looking from the side of the 10 ohm load. Now we go back and put the, connect the load and try to find the current flowing in the load. We try to find the voltage across the load. Okay, so we connected now the load to our equivalent circuit. This is a 10 ohm. This is a Norton resistor we found. 
This is a rotor current. So what we did, we replaced the whole circuit we have with these two components here. A volt current source and a resistance. Then what is the current flowing the 10 ohm? Well, it's a current divider. Then this is two ohm, uh, this 8 ohm multiplying 4.5 or 4.5 plus 10. You get 2.482 ampere. What if you are asked about the voltage across this uh, resistance here, across the 10 ohm resistor? The voltage here in this case um, uh, will be equal to the current that you have, this current source, okay, the current source that we have here, the Norton current, multiplying by the parallel combination of these two. So 4.5 in parallel with 10, because looking from the current source side, you see one equivalent resistance, which is the parallel combination of two, and this will give you this voltage here, which is the output voltage. Okay, let's consider one more example, and this example is important because it has dependent sources. And I would like you to pay close attention to that because dependent sources can be handled in the same way, but you don't eliminate them. When you are trying to find the northern resistance, you can't eliminate them because they are part of your circuit. They are not really actual sources. Okay, they are transistors and so on. Okay, so what is what's required from us here? Find this current I flowing in this 10 ohm resistor, you have two independent voltage sources and you have one current controlled voltage source. So this is a voltage source. It creates a voltage difference between here and here, but the value of this voltage difference is two times the current flowing in this branch. Okay? So now we'll start to apply the same rule. We well, are going to create a port between this point and this point. So what this is what's going to happen. I want my, my load is, is the 10 ohm. So I'm going to create a port between here and here, okay? And I will try to replace the circuit looking, looking fr from the load side between these two terminals by a current source in parallel with the resistor. The current source is the Norton current. The resistor is the Norton uh, resistance, okay? Resistance is the Norton resistance. Okay, so let's do how we, how we can do that first. We have to create a short circuit here, as we agreed, at the outer port. And then the current flowing in this short circuit will be your Norton current. And then you create an open circuit, okay? And then looking into the circuit, try to find your input resistance. Okay, so uh, I just redrew the circuit again. I didn't do any of the reduction steps yet. I made one change here. I, I call this controlling current I note, and this one is becoming two I note. You'll see why I did that, because later uh, in the next slide, I'm going to be using uh, loop analysis. So I'm going to be calling currents I1, I2, and I3. And to av avoid confusion with these currents, I shouldn't be having I1 flowing here, okay? So I made that change just to make the notations clear. So we'll have to do two things. We have to, re we have what, what we are going to do, we are going to replace this whole circuit by this one here. So this is a 10 ohm, this is the same 10 ohm we have here. But we replace this, the whole circuit between these two terminals, okay, by the Norton resistance and the Norton current. Our target is find the Norton resistance, find the Norton current. First, we create a short circuit between here and here to find the Norton current. And then we remove, we remove all the independent sources and then try to find the resistance looking between these, between, between these two terminals. This will be the Norton resistance. Let's see how we can do that. First thing, create a short circuit here. And then try to try to find the uh, the short circuit current flowing in this resistance, the 10 ohm resistor, and this current will be our I Norton. Okay, so uh, using a pen and paper, we're able to do that. You can see I create the short circuit here. I remove the 10 ohm. Okay, I'm looking for this I short circuit. I created a new circuit in the lab. When you do something like this, you simply create a short circuit at the output, and then you measure. The current flowing in this short circuit uh, using a meter and this will be your Norton your Norton equivalent of that linear circuit okay Norton, Norton equivalent current okay so I uh, this is a circuit now a new circuit that we have we have to analyze it uh, I used the uh, loop analysis other someone else may use nodal analysis it's really your choice or superposition doesn't matter so I call this current I1 I call this one I2 I call this one I3 we apply KVL around each loop in the way we learned before. So maybe we go here in the clockwise direction. So you have plus 70 minus 20 I1 minus I3 
minus 2 i1 minus i2 is equal to 0. So this is the first loop. If uh, So I went in the clockwise direction. Every time I see negative, positive, positive. If I see positive, negative, I count as negative. And I usually take the drops in the direction of the same current of the loop to be positive. Okay. So I counted this drop here is 20. If I take it as positive, negative, then it's 20 I1 minus I3. But I will include it with the negative sign. This drop here. If I if I if I draw it, it's gonna be I I usually I take it this way positive negative because in the same direction of the current. So the value of this drop is two ohm I one minus uh, minus I two, but I take it negative because I'm going the clockwise direction. So this is what I have here. Collect all the coefficients of similar currents. So twenty I one two I one. I move it to the other side becomes twenty two I one. I have here plus 2i2, I move to the other side, becomes minus 2i2. I have here uh, plus 20i3, I move to the other side, becomes minus 20i3. This or is equal to 70. So this is my first equation. Now we go to loop number two. Notice in all these loops we can write KVL because we don't have any current sources. Okay, uh, we have problem in applying loop analysis that if there's a current source, uh, but uh, but here we, there isn't, there, we don't have any of them, so we can apply KVL. So again, let's go around in the in this uh, in this loop here. From here to here, you have two i note positive. From here to here, you have fifty positive. From here to here, you will get minus two i two minus i one. Okay, you can of course write it as two i one minus i two. You take it as a positive sign. I write it as two i two minus i one with a negative sign because I'm going I'm going in the clockwise direction. Okay. Now, as we have done before in all loop analysis and other analysis techniques, you have to get rid of the independent of the control of the controlling parameter i note. Okay, so uh, so this current i note we have to get rid of it. You can see that this i note is the same as i three, so I can simply replace i note by i three in my equation. Okay, and this is what I'm going to be doing here, and I'm going to collect all the coefficients. This becomes two i three. If you move it to the other side, it becomes minus 2i3. You have here 2i1, you move it to the other side, it becomes 2 minus 2i1. You have here minus 2i2, you move it to the other side, it becomes 2i2. This is all equal to 50. Okay? So, um, so this is the second equation. And now we write a third equation from loop number 3. And then we have three equations and three unknowns. i1, i2, and i3. Once we solve them, you find i2 and i2. Here is the i short circuit you are looking for. And this I short circuit is the Norton current. Okay, we repeat the, the same steps for the third loop. Again, I'm going in the clockwise direction. So this will give you minus 2 I note. This will give you minus 20 I3 minus I1. This one here will give you minus 4 I3. Okay, get rid of I note and write it as I3. And then collect the coefficients. I, I move everything, so I keep everything here in this, in this, um, actually move everything to the other side to make the coefficient of I3 positive. So this will give me 20 I1, you move to the other side, becomes minus 20 I1. You have here minus 2 I3, minus 20 I3, minus 4 I3, so we give 26 I3, minus 26. You move to the other side, becomes 26 I3. Uh, so this is um, the equation that we have here. And uh, I divide it by 2 here in this line, and I include the 0 for I2. Uh, the reason for this, as I explained to you, if you want to put in a matrix form, you have to be careful. The fact that I2 does not exist in this equation um, does not mean that it's not there. It is there with a coefficient of 0, so you have to put in the corresponding location, the matrix 0. So I, I constructed the matrix. I'm not showing the steps here. I, uh, I solved it uh, using a MATLAB code I use MATLAB to solve these matrices I got that I1 is 39 ampere I2 is 94 ampere I3 is equal to 30 ampere so this means and please double check these answers I, I believe they are okay you this means that I2 which is the I short circuit I'm looking for which is I Norton is equal to 94 ampere so we know now that I Norton is 94 ampere okay now we move to the second step in the second step you have to remove all the independent sources that you have in the circuit. You do this because you want to remove the Norton equivalent current. So I'm going to short this one. 
every volt independent voltage source becomes short circuit so this one is short circuited this one is short circuited you don't touch any dependent source okay you don't you don't leave it as it is in the circuit and then try to analyze it let's see how we're going to do this this is very important to pay attention to because we'll have to apply some external source i will show you this in the next slide okay so I redrew the circuit again after I removed all the independent sources. So I short circuited this voltage source. I short circuited this voltage source. And now I have these, these, these terminals here. I want to find the resistance looking into these terminals. Now because you don't have only resistances, you have control, control, uh, uh, control sources, dependent sources like this one, the way to, to find the input resistance, you have to connect an external source. I call it the external. A certain current will be drawn from this current source. I call it I external. The ratio between V external to I external is the input resistance seen between these two points, which is equivalent to the north resistance. Okay? So every time, this is very important to remember, because this is the same way you're going to be doing it when you analyze amplifier circuits later in electronics and... Um, uh, of course, discussing amplifiers and obams and so on. Uh, if you find you want to find the output resistance, they ask you to connect a source, an external source, trying to see how much current is being drawn from that source, and the ratio between the voltage and the current will give you the input resistance. So, uh, so why do we need to do that? Because you have dependent sources inside the circuit. By the way, these dependent circuits, dependent sources can significantly change the input resistance seen between these two terminals okay so if you change this coefficient from two to four the input resistance can change significantly okay so let's see how we can analyze this so now we applied an external source um we shorted all the other independent sources and my target now is to find the ratio between v external to i external we can do some simplification though before we start you can see now that this 2 ohm is in parallel with this 20 ohm. Remember, this is all one node. So we can redraw the circuit in a little bit simpler form. And our target is to get the ratio between V external to I external. If you don't feel comfortable using V external, put it as 1 volt. And then you have to find the ratio between this 1 volt and this external current that you are drawing. Okay? I usually leave them as symbols, V external and I external, and try to get this the ratio, the ratio between these two things okay so uh we we combined the two resistances in the previous slide and this gave us a resistance of 1.18 ohm so this is now how the circuit looks like my target is find the ratio v external to i external we, we have to start to simplify this circuit i can see there is a current called the i note flowing here and this this voltage is to i note when this current flows here it creates a drop with this polarity positive negative okay but this branch is in parallel with this branch so this means that v external is minus 4 i naught this is a very important relationship why because everywhere i see i naught i'm going to replace it by minus v external over 4 my target is to find only one relationship relating v external and i external and their ratio will be the, the input resistance, which is the northern resistance we are looking for. Now, let's uh, let's let's uh, let's do KVL around the, this loop here. You see that V external is equal to two I note plus the drop across this resistance, which is one point two one eight multiplying by this current I. Okay, so I wrote this expression here. This is simply application of KVL around this loop. Okay, but this current I is equal to I note plus I external. So I can get rid of this I here and replace it by I note plus I external. So now I found one equation relating V external I external. I also got rid of I note and replace it here by minus V external over 4. You multiply by 2, it becomes minus V external over 2. Okay, so I made two steps in moving from here to here. I remove the I node by minus V external over 4. So this becomes this term here becomes minus V external over 2. I replace this current I using KCL by I node plus I external. Okay? 
Um, and I know what's I note. I note is minus V external over 4. Okay? So now I'm going to collect all the coefficients related to V external one side, all the coefficients related to I external on the other side. So, uh, so I have here 1. This will give me minus 1 half. I move it to the other side, becomes 1 half. This 1.18 multiplying I note, but I note is minus V external over 4. So this will give me 1.18 over 4. I move it to the other side, becomes positive. Okay? The, the other term multiplying I external is 1.18 I external. Okay? So the ratio between V external to I external is equal to this one divided by this one. Okay? And if you do this ratio, you get 0.83 ohm. Of course, if this coefficient was a change from 2 to 4 or to 10 or to 0.1, you'll see that the input resistance will be different, okay? So these, these dependent sources, they can significantly change the input resistance seen between any two terminals. And every time you see them, you have to include some external source, get the ratio between V external and I external, and this will be your input resistance. So here we did this calculation, and it's equal to 0.83 ohm. Now, we go back to our original circuit. We, we know what is the Norton current. We know it's 94 ampere. We know what's the Norton resistance. It's 0.93 ohm. And then we construct the equivalent circuit with the load. Remember, we had the load, and we removed that load. This load was 10 ohm. We have to include it again now, right now. Okay, so the last step, I put everything together. This is the Norton current we calculated. This is the Norton resistance we calculated. And now... This is how the circuit looks like from the side of the 10 ohm resistor. We connect the 10 ohm resistor. If we want to find the current in the 10 ohm resistor, you do a current division expression. 94 ampere multiply 0.93 over 0.93 plus 10. And if you do that, actually the exact answer is 8 ampere. But because I did rounding, uh, I got 7.999. Uh, but if you if you try to use a larger number of decimal points or keep it as ratios, you'll get exactly 8 amperes. So there are 8 amperes flowing in this 10 ohm resistor in the circuit that we just considered.